Okay. Okay. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Is it August? Yes. Do I still want to film this video? Also, yes. So am I gonna do it? Obviously, you're watching it. Hi, hello, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly, and here I talk about books and stuff. Whatever I feel like, really. And it's been a minute since I filmed a video. I think I filmed a couple videos and I just haven't like posted them. One of them will not be seen in the light of day because I just am not happy with it. Want to get something out. And I want to do this and I've been wanting to do this. I just, July was busy, 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 busy. So today I am here to film my, my mid-year book tag because it's August. All the books I'm going to talk about is everything I've read up till this point because my channel, my rules. Let's, let's get started. I've noticed this year that a lot of questions and people's videos are all like, everyone's kind of making it their own. They pick and choose different questions that they want to. So the questions I have, I took from Tia Chu, I think is her channel name. I very much love her channel and you should absolutely check it out. But I know she got her questions probably from somewhere else. So I've just, I've looked and I've, these are the ones that I want to answer. So, so as of August, I have also read 31 books and I have a goal of 40 books. So I'm definitely on track to make my reading goal this year. Yeah. So I am going to start with the questions now. First one to answer is best book you've read so far in 2024. And I've got sort of two. Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Love in the Big City by Sung park. I talk about this quite a few times on this channel already. Um, this book is not for everyone. It's not really a love story but it's about this guy and like these just three different relationships he's had in his life and how they have kind of shaped him and who he is. And there's just so many different moments in here that like spoke to me on a personal level that made this so so special to me. And then kind of going into the next question but still answers this one. So Next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2024, and that is going to be Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. Um, this is also one of the best books I've read this year. I don't know what it was about Hellbent, but I love this. I still think about how much I loved this book to the point that I've like already thought about rereading this book this year, and I already read this book this year. I just absolutely loved it. It was such a good sequel, and I'm so excited to continue this series. I love it. I love it. I love it. Third question on this questionnaire is uh, new releases that you haven't read yet but you want to. So personally, I honestly don't really pay attention to new releases. I just don't. I'm just, it's a surprise whenever a book gets released and I'm like, oh, I really want to read that. And then I find out it was released like yesterday. But I do have one that I know of for sure, that I know of for sure that was released 2024 that I own and that I want to read and it is The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I read his Founders Trilogy and absolutely loved it and then this book it says a Holmes and Watson style detective duo take the stage in this fantasy with a mystery twist. I love a good like Sherlock Holmes detective mystery by an author that I really really enjoyed other books from. I don't know why I haven't gotten to this yet. I just like haven't. I think there's a little too much expectation on this for me. I haven't read this yet. It's a new release and I really, really, really want to read it. Question four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. My understanding for this answer is that when I came up my, my answers, this book had not been released, but I think it is released now and it is called Last Scene Online by Lauren James. I'll insert a picture here. Um, but this author wrote in unauthorized fan treaties that I read last year and that one is free online and this is sort of like the sequel to that uh, and I loved 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 an unauthorized fan treaties it was so so good and maybe this is coming from someone who is not like a mystery reader but like I I really loved it I was into it and I was like having so much 
fun with it that about this girl or this person online and who starts off who is like obsessed with the show where think think supernatural okay think supernatural and starts off being like i am have proof basically that the two actors of the show are actually dating irl and then it snowballs from there to like something that is just disastrous and it is so good it kept me gripped and on my toes and it's told through like newspaper articles and tabloid posts and all this stuff and so yeah this is the sequel to that sort of traditionally published this one is traditionally published and i really want to read it um but i think it's out now that i'm filming this but it came out in the second half of the year and i i want to read this number five is my biggest surprise this year and i think that one will have to go to the way of kings by brandon sanderson if you don't know anything let me let me just because this is the only one I have it on me, is Oathbringer. This is the third book in this series. This is 1,200 pages. Okay, so we're gonna get, like, just look up the series and you will see just how massive these books are. They are intimidating. I figured I would read them at some point, but I didn't think that some point would be this year. Um, but I've been reading them and thoroughly enjoying myself. Um, way more than I thought I would with books of this size. Like sure there are points where I get bored and like have to take breaks and stuff but for the most part Brandon Sanderson keeps me hooked. That is a huge surprise because 1200 pages? How can you keep someone hooked for 1200 pages? But Brandon Sanderson does it. So question six is favorite new author, either a debut author or a new to me author. And I've got two answers for this. So first one is going to be Melinda Lowe, um, just because I read two of her books last night at the Telegraph Club in a scatter of light recently and fell in love with these. And they're both YA and I'm not too cute, much of a YA reader anymore. So the fact that I like gave four stars and five stars to this, like, that's a talented writer to tell these stories in such a way that even me as like a 30 year old I was able to connect but like I don't know I don't know they were really good and I would be more than happy to read other works by this author I looked them up and some of the earlier stuff doesn't interest me as much but like if they came out anything else I might be willing to check it out because I thoroughly enjoyed both of these books and then the second answer to this one really is um, Stephanie Garber, uh, who wrote the Caravel and Once Upon a Broken Heart tril um, trilogy. I read Caravel series earlier this year, and while I thought it was okay, I ended up liking it more than I had originally thought I would. And part of that, I think, has to do with her writing, because while, this sounds so counterintuitive, but while I wasn't necessarily gripped with the whole Caravel setting, she had some absolutely gorgeous descriptions and gorgeous writings like it was a just beautifully written well maybe the story wasn't quite so strong um, but I'm interested to see if kind of her plot skills have gotten better by reading um, Once Upon a Broken Heart from Carousel series but just her writing again was so so gorgeous it was beautiful Number seven is newest fictional crush. I think about a couple of these from some romance books, but the first one, but Jack from Love Theoretically. I love Allie Hazelwood male characters. At least I've read three of her books and she, they've just like some of my favorite male characters. Like they're just so like utterly obsessed with the female character, but in, like in a healthy way, at least in my opinion, like it doesn't come off a creeper and I just love that they want what's best for our female characters. And I don't know, I don't know, I, I love, and I'm only calling this one because, I mean, I read Check and Mate and I think it was Nolan was his name. I remember I absolutely adored him. And yeah, I maybe it's just a general thing is that I love newest crushes, crushes are gonna be Ali Hazelwood Malin, men. And then the other one on this is Justin from Just For The Summer by Addie Jimenez. I loved him. I loved both of them but like we're talking fictional crushes and he kind of won out on that series but like just the way he wanted to go and have fun on these dates and take care of her and I don't know 
they just had some good characters that I love to read about. And that doesn't happen often. Number eight is a book that made you cry. Again, I've got two answers. First one, again, love in the big city. Um, and you know this made me cry. The conversation relationships topics with his mom in this made me cry. I just cried. It just hit me right in the feels. And the second book that I have is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Door Door Door. World War II book about a blind girl in France under occupation and a Nazi soldier. It made me cry. I cried a couple of times. There was definitely parts in here that were just really tough to read and made me sad and I cried because of it. Number nine, turning it around, is books that made you happy. We're gonna go for the cop out and say that just about every book I've read this year made me happy. I mean, there's definitely some that have not made me happy, but for the most part, I've been, a lot of these books have made me happy. I think the real answer to this is Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. It's been like a month since I've read this now and it made me really happy. Like I read this in a day and I don't, like I literally a day, like I started this at like 11, 12 in the afternoon and finished it at like 8 p.m. that night. I could not stop reading this book. It's a, it's a romance and it's an Ellie Hazelwood romance and they make me happy. Number 10 is the most beautiful books and there's no other answer than these covers of these Jane Austen books. Like, come on. These are like the prettiest things I've ever seen in my life. I have them displayed on my shelf usually. Um, there should be that big space right there is usually how they're displayed and I think I just they're so pretty they're so pretty I've had these for months and I can't get over how beautiful these books are they're they're so pretty oh I love them so much last question on this list a questionnaire thing to wrap it all up is what books do I need to read by the end of the year and I've got two here First one, first one, Tainted Cup. I'm bound and determined to read this by the end of the year. I, I, I need to get to this. And then my next one is Jade City by Fonda Lee. I got this for Christmas and I haven't touched it and I don't really think about it. And there's something that makes me feel bad about to still have this unread by the time Christmas comes around again. So um, I really wanna to get to this before the end of the year. And that, my friends, is my mid year book freak out tag. Uh, please let me know, give me your thoughts. What are like your answers to this question? I always have fun with this and I get new ideas from people when I ever hear about them. And that was fun, I like talking about books. And that's gonna be that, that's gonna be this video. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night, evening, whenever you're watching this, I hope it is great, so. Thank you and goodbye. Oh my god. Oh, oh that is heavy. Okay.